Spooky announces Halloween is next. New Silver Falls game for the P3. Design for Elements Pinball revealed. Hi, my name is Jonathan Houston. I'm the editor of Pinball Magazine. And as every month, I'm joined by... I'm Martin Roll, Ayer. Martin <laughs> Ayer of Pinball News. That's correct. Thank you, Jonathan. Yes, indeed. We're, we're back together for, a, for another month's uh, discussion of all the events that took place in the pinball world. And this time we're looking back at the month of June 2021. And what a month it has been. It has, yes. It's, yes, and uh, we I say that, we quiet, say that but every month, but absolutely true this year, uh, this time. Some months are slower, and we, uh, we are honest about that. We say it was a slow month. We still have stuff to talk about. And this time, it's not a slow month. It's not. So I guess we better sort of get on with it, because otherwise it's going to be another uh, two-hour-plus uh, podcast. And I'm sure everybody would like us to condense this down and get all the key facts and features in as soon as possible. Right, so, okay, so here we go. Yep, let's do it. Spooky Pinball have been teasing and finally announced Halloween will be their next title. And for Indeed. those not... Uh, 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 to, to avoid any confusion, Halloween <laughs> is a movie franchise. It's not dedicated so much to the uh, the holiday. Yeah, it's not like Oktoberfest or something like that. It's uh, it's the movie, the original movie, the, right. very, the very first one. There've been some uh, some sequels, but uh, I think they're sticking to the original, the Michael Myers uh, classic. And um, well, they've announced it and um, but they a few haven't bits. They, they haven't shown the or they haven't revealed the game. Let's let's put it like that. They no, did, the title did, recordings they haven't anyway. Yes. Uh, although they did show the underside of the play field. Yeah, um, from which people are obviously trying to work out exactly what's on the top side. Uh, but it did seem that there were some some features we could identify on there. There was uh, two subway tunnels, which uh, seemed to both lead to servo-driven ball elevators. Now, we don't know quite how... F- how or why that, that elevator is there, uh, whether it just lifts the ball back up onto the play field rather than a, an up kicker, or whether it moves it onto an upper play field, or an upper upper play field, or how far it moves it. But um, there's obviously a bit of bit of concern when you start putting servos in uh, pinball games because, well, servos these days are pretty cheap, but they also are sort of quite unreliable as well. But uh, the Spooky team have been adamant that they've been testing the heck out of it and been really um, made sure that they're, they're, they're bulletproof uh, motors, which is uh, obviously very important. Right. There were also, uh, th- we could see three flippers. There might be more. Um, the, the, those are the ones that are visible from the underside. Right. There was a central drop target bank, which was slightly angled, which was uh, which is good. It probably means it won't send the ball straight back down the middle. It looked like there was a single resettable drop target on the left-hand side and uh, maybe one on the upper play field or an upper play field. Um, apart from that, um, th- there seemed to be multiple entrances to the two subway tunnels as well. So, right. and which, does, seen... which does suggest um, an, an upper play field as well that can drop the ball in. Right, and um, from from the hints that uh, Buck and Charlie from Spooky Pinball left in their uh, uh, videos that were shared on Facebook and YouTube and what have you. Um, uh, the game is likely to have more than one upper playfield. Yes, I think you're talking about an upper playable upper, upper playfield even. So uh, that could be interesting. Uh, from what I could see, there was at least one, but it appears there's also on the uh, upper left. Uh, do I say that right? Upper right mm-hmm. area. There's also something that seems to be an upper play field. And uh, so it could be two, and maybe even more, who knows. So. Yeah, well, they are saying it's uh, you know their most packed game yet, as far as features and, and hardware goes. So uh, let's see what, what is actually revealed when they, when they do show us some pictures. What we do know about it um, is that there are going to be three editions produced. Yes, and uh, um, let me add to that immediately that um, yeah. there's three editions... Um, which are the uh, the standard edition, the block sucker edition, and 
the collector's edition and I'll let you handle the prices. But the interesting thing is that basically production has been set to a thousand units, but they are free to decide how many of each edition in the sense that if they can sell uh, a thousand collector's editions, then there will be no Bloodsucker editions or standard editions. If they sell uh, 750 uh, uh, collector's editions, then there's uh, room for 250 Bloodsucker and or standard editions. They're completely free to decide for themselves how those numbers add up, but the the total is limited to 1,000. Okay, that's, a, that's an interesting model. It's not something which we've seen before, but this whole three standard, three three edition uh, system is not something we've seen from them before either. Right. So that's um, that's uh, as you mentioned the prices. Well, the standard edition um, comes in at just under seven thousand dollars, six nine nine five. The the Bloodsucker edition is uh, one thousand more at seven nine nine five, and the collector's edition is another thousand, eight nine nine five. The standard edition requires a thousand pound, a thousand dollar initial deposit. The Bloodsucker edition is fifteen hundred dollars deposit, and the collector's edition two thousand dollars. So um, you need to put that money up front even before the game is produced. And um, the collector's edition will be built first, the most expensive model. The the middle model, uh, the Bloodsucker edition, will be built next, and then the standard edition to be built last. And um, the, there is a, a list of what's what's added on to... Oh, my God. You won't believe it. It's Gary Flower calling. Already? Already. Oh, my goodness. He must know we're on. Okay. Well, let me see if I can see what he, what, okay. what he wants. Okay. Yeah, sure. Hello, Gary. Okay. We're in the middle of a podcast, Gary. Oh, am I live on air? Yes, you are. <laughs> I'm uh, about to rush out, so. So, um, why are you calling? I'll have if you're to share to all the news through. with you another time, but there's a lot of interesting stuff going on, isn't there? Well, yes, there is, and we were hoping to get your input, but if you're, uh, if you're rushing to go out, then I suppose we'll talk to you later. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I've got someone waiting for me. Right. Okay. Well, good luck. Nice to hear your voice. Okay. Thank Hi, you. Uh, thank you, Gary. Uh, talk soon. Or, uh, okay. Bye for now. Yeah. yeah. Bye. Well, he's got his priorities straight. That's uh, that's good. Yep. So Gary's going out. Uh, won't be joining us uh, this podcast to tell us all his input on uh, the, all these exciting stories that we're talking about today. Right. Yeah. So, oh, well. Too bad. Uh, uh, where were we? Oh, yes. Um, the good news forward. is we did get him finally on the show, but... We, I, kind of, yeah. Um, we got him on to say he's not going to be on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's good. So, well, that uh, might be a relief for some people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very cruel, but true. Right. Um, so, yes, we were just saying about the uh, the, the prices and the... Uh, the, the uh, the cabinet treatment, which uh, Spooky uh, are famed for, their butter cabinets, which are the uh, sort of ultra glossy decals, are uh, normally included on uh, on one of the, the higher end model, but they're not on any of the models this time, and they're available as an option. Uh, another nine hundred and ninety five dollars if you want your cabinet decals to to glisten, and um, it does look like um, on the collector edition they they've cut the the bill of materials down as, as low as they can. Um, the collector edition, uh, sorry, I mean the standard edition compared to the collector edition. Um, the standard edition doesn't have uh, a coin box or a lid, um, doesn't have a knocker installed, doesn't have target decals Ooh, either. Those are expensive target decals. Well, exactly. It doesn't sound like uh, hugely expensive pri- uh, pieces to put on the game, but they're not on there anyway. So, right. uh, but, but the play field in all three models will be the same, basically. The play field features will be the same. There'll be different... Um, Different characters or additional characters on uh, on the more expensive models, and you know all the usual things like uh, you know, art blades inside, and uh, and different trim and flipper button protectors and things like that as, as you go up the range. Right. But um, a thousand games going to be built over. Well, I don't know. How, don't know whether they've in, increased their, their speed of production, but uh, otherwise it's going to take them the best part of a, a year to to get through those. Right. Well, they did Rick and Morty um, 
in 18 months or less, including uh, unforeseen COVID uh, uh, lockdowns. True. Uh, um, if so, so production is being increased with 250 units for this game. Uh, mm-hmm. So, well, it's, you, they might still be looking at uh, a good portion of at least 18 to uh, 24 months uh, building Halloween. I would have thought. I would have thought a year. I think they probably got because uh, uh, something we haven't mentioned yet is that they they have built an extension onto the onto the factory in order to be able to build games faster and develop more games. So that that extension is nearly complete, I believe. Right. Um, I haven't seen the pictures myself, but that's what uh, I, I'm led to believe. So hopefully that will allow more people into the factory and 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 build more games simultaneously and and up the production number uh, or production rate. Right. So so I, I wouldn't have thought they want to stick with the same title for more than more than about a year, to be honest. Right. That, that probably feels about right, and a thousand would seem to be a, an achievable thing for that. But um, we said the theme is Halloween, but it's um, it's not necessarily, is it? There's a bit more to it than that. Well, there's a uh, strong rumour going on, and um, uh, I'm going to refer to uh, a Canadian Spinball podcast as a reference for that, uh, where it is believed that uh, the same playfield layout is going to be used for another theme as well. Well, that was actually referenced on Pinside, I think, by Luke from Spooky, who did say that there'll be a, well, it's very likely there will be a second theme applied to the same layout. Right. Okay. So I didn't see it there. Um, couldn't watch everything, but I did hear Canada talk about mm-hmm. it. Uh, according to uh, what I understood from the source I just mentioned, uh, that theme is uh, supposed to be an even more niche horror theme than Halloween already is. Yeah. Uh, which I mean, sort of surprised me, I have to say, because I already yeah. figured Halloween is c- quite niche. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, it's not like Rick and Morty that... that um, I'm not sure whether they will sell out a 1,000 units immediately like they did with uh, Rick and Morty 750 units. Um, I was... I would expect the, the, the other... Uh, a theme with the same layout to be more family friendly, but apparently it's not. No, that's what you'd think, isn't it? Because uh, Halloween is certainly not, or well, the theme of it is not family friendly, but uh, we haven't seen the execution of it yet, as it were. Right. To so. uh, avoid, well, to not avoid the pun, but to walk into the pun. Um, but yes, I, I originally thought a more family friendly theme would make sense, but. You know, I suppose if it's if the layout doesn't really lend itself to that, and it's and it is much more a sort of horror type, a sort of haunted house type theme, then it would uh, would would maybe you know maybe you can't tone it down that much, and there might be mechanisms on the playfield which would not not work if they were no if there was like a stabbing knife or something like that. You couldn't really make that a very family friendly device unless you change it to something else which uh, completely which would look a bit out of place if it was designed that way right but so. uh, we'll see when the um, probably they will announce the um, both uh, what I'm sure they will uh, they will announce both uh, titles at or reveal both titles at the same time oh right so uh, so I wonder if they actually have a prototype of the other one yet because it's uh, it's a lot of if you're not going to make many of them or you're not going to sell many of them, it's a lot of effort to go to. You've got to you know um, implement a whole new set of artwork and assets and sound calls and video and all that kind of stuff that yeah. goes into a game now, just for I don't know hundred machines or maybe less. Well, maybe, yeah, it could be fewer than that. Even who knows? Yeah. So. Oh, well, uh, we wish uh, Spooky, of course, best of luck with the uh, upcoming reveal for uh, for Halloween and the, the potential second uh, title. Uh, yeah. We're not, not completely done uh, talking about Spooky Pinball. Oh, no. No, no. Uh, because, uh, well, I'm not sure whether we mentioned it, uh, but uh, the production of Rick and Morty has finished. So that's done. Yeah, and in the meantime, before getting into the production of Halloween, Spooky is actually building Alice Cooper's Nightmare Castle again. 
apparently there was a uh, uh, a lot of games uh, that were supposed to go to a certain distributor, uh, but they were never realized. And apparently the distributor is either no longer in business or um, uh, doesn't want the games anymore. I don't know what the story is, but uh, they are building Alice Cooper Nightmare Castle again. And uh, I believe uh, that well, the last thing that I saw was uh, they were down to a, a single digit number of games still being available for those interested. Right. Oh, I, I, I do wonder whether it was um, something which we haven't actually uh, included, I think, in our, in our list of items to be mentioned. But um, it's, it's actually quite an important one, which we, should, we could maybe bring up now. The... Um, in in June this year, uh, the month we are we are covering, it was actually finally announced that there was an agreement between the European Union and the United States over the import duties, which right. were being paid or being charged by the European Union on pinball games when they came into Europe, uh, a twenty five percent tariff. Right, and um, it had been suspended earlier in the year, uh, but it was a danger that was going to be reimposed once that suspension finished, which is, I think, was like two months or three months long suspension. Right. But the good news was that at the G7 meeting that was held um, recently, uh, the European Union and, um, and the US agreed to scrap the whole system. So it's not going to be reimposed, um, not now and uh, not any time in, in the immediate future. So Hooray! That, so that extra charge on pinball machines has gone for good. Well, at least gone for the immediate future, and that's until the next spat occurs. Right. So yeah. uh, the, the, the sad news is, the <laughs> sad news is that in the meantime, um, ex- uh, the costs for for labor and metal and wood mm-hmm. have gone up so much that you probably pay that twenty five percent soon anyway. That is very likely. Um, but I mean, the reason I mentioned that at, the, at this point was I was wondering whether there were. Uh, well, there was a, a distributor in Europe who had ordered those games and was waiting for this tariff to be uh, either cancelled or suspended before they actually took delivery of them. So maybe Spooky Pinball didn't build them at the time, knowing that they'd have to store them in the meantime, and uh, and just waited until this, this tariff had gone away, and now they can build the games and ship them uh, at, at a uh, 20% less price or lower price than uh, they would have been if the tariff had been there. Right. So uh, that that's pure speculation on my part as to why they've got these games that, that weren't delivered, that were allocated to a distributor but, but weren't produced. Um, but it's a good good point at which to bring up that particular topic because um, we we uh, we weren't going to mention it later. So let's mention it now. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Um, and also, um, well, good news in general uh, regarding Spooky, although it's, uh, uh, it's starting with. Um, the next title, Halloween. Uh, there's a couple of uh, hardware upgrades that mm-hmm. will be applied to the uh, to the game, and you have to think about the use of uh, Molex connectors, which are more reliable, um, a quieter uh, power supply, so you won't have that fan noise uh, uh, that very some important. people find find very uh, annoying. Yeah, and uh, and lots of other stuff. Um, Spooky produced two videos uh, during the past month in which they uh, go into much more detail. So if you're interested in uh, finding out what other uh, uh, upgrades are coming to uh, newer uh, Spooky games, then check out those videos as well. They're on the Spooky channel, so easy to find. Great. Um, I think uh, I think that's about it for our coverage of Spooky for this month. Yeah, well, uh, unless they reveal the game during the <laughs> recording of this podcast. Well, I'm sure we're all hovering over uh, our email just to make sure that if, if the report comes out and the pictures are in, we'll uh, we'll cover them right here. Right. So, um, yeah, I did ask for um, um, uh, information under embargo up front, but so, so far, uh, nothing. Yeah, I don't think Spooky are really... Really, that keen on on doing that kind of uh, promotion? They they just do stuff when they when they're ready, which is fine. You know that's the way they work. So moving on to right. um, our second headline, which was about a new game for the the P three platform from Multimorphic. Right, uh, and this one is uh, is a second game, I think, from Nicholas Baldridge. I think it's who, his uh, third already, but I it? might be mistaken. Yeah, there's also oh, um, there was uh, yes. 
Ranger yeah. in the Ruins. Ranger in the think. Ruins was the first one, yeah. Then there was a, was there a, a well, actually I can't yeah. remember what the second one was. Maybe it wasn't from him. But, um, but yeah, Nicholas uh, Baldridge has teamed up with his daughter Sophia to produce a game called Silver Falls. Right. Now this is uh, for the for the P3, as we said, and it uses the uh, the heist upper playfield module. So that's a, a second game for for that particular piece of hardware. Right. And uh, probably just as interesting as that is the fact that certainly to uh, a music head such as yourself is that the uh, all the music for the for the game has come from a certain Scott Denisi. And Who? Uh, well, exactly. Yeah, famed for um, <laughs> for his work uh, with Spooky Pinball on uh, well, t- t- total nuclear annihilation, amongst other things. Right. But, um, and, and and the and Rick uh, and Morty. soundtrack for that, and yeah. uh, yes, followed by Rick and Morty later. And uh, we don't know whether any future games will uh, will involve a collaboration between Scott and Spooky at this stage, but uh, we'll, we'll wait and see. But right. in the meantime, he's done the music for uh, Silver Falls. And which... he's also working on uh, the music for the upcoming uh, P3, the new P3 module, for which we don't know for which game it will be, but uh, Scott's working on that as well. Well, okay, doing a lot of work for Multimorphic, so, uh, or with Multimorphic, anyway. Yeah. So, congratulations on, uh, on this new game, which... Uh, which I had, a, I had a look at the videos. I don't know if you had a chance to, to watch anything, um, yeah. uh, Jonathan, because uh, Kevin from Buffalo Pinball was was doing a stream of it on Twitch. Yes, I watched it. Well, I watched the part of it. Let's put it like that. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was uh, very informative. Uh, congrats on that, uh, Kevin. Uh, it surprised me that the music produced by Scott Denise is uh, actually rather loungy, I would mm-hmm. say. Uh, it's very laid back, um, not not that energetic as, as we've experienced with um, Total Nuclear Annihilation, for example. Um, so, uh, yeah, and the, and the game is... Um, uh, I, I can see where the game is... Uh, uh, the gameplay idea is coming from. There's a house with uh, six rooms in it and you have to uh, score... Uh, uh, points which are actually mm-hmm. uh, pin box and yep. with those pin box you then can visit the store and in the store you can buy furniture for the house but as soon as you buy something it deducts from your score yes well from your from your pin box account yes yes that's right uh, yeah and um uh, well it's an interesting idea but it's um uh it's a fairly simple game, I'd say, but uh, yeah. it it seemed it seemed that the I mean the way that Kevin was play, playing it was that um, rather than go to the store and buy each item individually, you just wait till you, till you've earned enough pin bucks and go into the store and buy everything, right. and then and then move on basically. And then once you've got everything, a, a timed mode starts, uh, and when if you complete that, then you can move on to the next room. Um, it it does seem also that there's. To me, at least, it seemed that there was a, a, a bit of a scoring imbalance in that the, the, the real one way to, to earn a lot of pin bucks was to get the 10-second uh, the, uh, the uh, playfield multiplier going, which you get by spin, uh, spelling out more cash on the side targets. There are more on one side and cash on the other. And then just shoot the spinner, because during those every, every shot or every spin or every switch register adds bucks to it, and once you get that spinner going with a 10 second uh, double playfield multiplier, uh, you rack up huge amounts of, right. uh, of money, and that basically gets you through that room. Well, that must be a very satisfying spinner shot, then. Oh, well, all, sp- all spinner shots are satisfying when they work properly, <laughs> <laughs> right? So, um, oh well, um, congrats to uh, Nick and Sophia, and of course, uh, the entire uh, Multimorphic team for mm. uh, the, this uh, third party. Uh, uh, game release. The game is uh, uh, obviously uh, for sale, uh, but you need to have the uh, highest playfield module. Uh, and if you have that, then it uh, you can buy it for or download it even for uh, one hundred and forty nine dollars. Bargain, so. really, isn't it? Uh, for what you get? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's a very uh, very good piece of work and uh, certainly worth that that price. 
and we look forward to seeing seeing lots more games coming out for the for the P3 and really sort of uh, make them make the most of the uh, the interchangeability of games uh, and playfield modules right. as well that that platform offers. Um, and just before we finish on Multimorphic, we did mention uh, just now that Spooky had ex- had extend, extended their uh, building. Uh, but I understand Multimorphic uh, have also done the same. Yeah, actually, that was news that came out uh, when we recorded our previous podcast. Uh, we just missed it in that one. Uh, I did mention it in the uh, Pinball Magazine newsletter already. Right. Um, yes, they. Uh, I think they sort of like doubled in size. Uh, I think they got the, the the back part of the unit where they are, uh, where they currently are, uh, also mm-hmm. became available, uh, which means that they can do a lot more in house. And um, uh, obviously, they need the space to uh, to expand further and and speed up production. So, uh, so good for them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All growth is is good, especially in this climate. So, congratulations to Multimorphic on the new game and their new larger premises. Right. Yeah, and uh, of course, uh, well, um, we know that Scott is working on the music for the uh, the next P three module. So, there is a next P three module module. In the words, we don't know when it's going to be re- uh, revealed, but um, on the development end, uh, they're certainly not uh, uh, um, developing, so to speak. So they are working on, on, on new stuff and uh, more innovations and, and what have you. So mm-hmm. uh, looking forward to that. Um, but I think, it, well... Uh, we don't know when they might be revealing something, but I have a feeling that it could be a very game-heavy uh, uh, second half year of <laughs> year. Yeah, well, I think once pinball shows get going again, the, the, be, the, the pressure will be on manufacturers to, to show something new. Because you know, we've, we've seen a lot of the games before, even if we haven't had a chance to try them all. Then, um, yeah, I think there's been... well. I, to counter that, actually, I mean, I was about to go ahead and, and agree with you, but I think we might counter that a bit by saying I think the, the shortage of supply of various parts for the pinball and other manufacturing might actually re- lead to a slight slowing down because um, games which we thought were going to be announced no, now are uh, coming out later because there uh, haven't been uh, the supply shortages are in place. You know, people can't get the parts, they can't get, uh, in some cases, they can't even get the wood for some of these games. So um, I think it will, might might wait a bit until, I don't know, next year before we, we get a, a big influx of new games once uh, once everybody's able to get all the parts that they need. Right, and, uh, but, but, but still, these manufacturers uh, need to get going. And, oh, absolutely. Uh, yeah, they're, they're I mean, the so production they, line. Yeah, so whether they are building an old game or a new one, uh, they still need to get going. But if there's no old games to build, then what are you going to do? Yeah, yeah. Well, you have to keep have to keep demand up, don't you? Right. That's it. Keep so, feeding uh, the line, as they say. Yeah. Right. Okay, okay. So moving on to our uh, our third headline. Yeah. Very very interesting uh, scoop that you uh, got me there because I completely missed it. Well, I very nearly did. Only as I was going through uh, every company to, um, over the last couple of days just to have a look and see what they've been up to. Uh, but yeah. Um, a company we've both covered in the past, uh, Team Pinball, who are right. based in South Wales uh, in the United Kingdom. Uh, they designed the the game, the Punny Factory, for Pinball Adventures, uh, right. Andrew McBain's company. And um, we didn't know whether they were going to be involved in designing any of his upcoming games, or well, they're all upcoming at the moment, any of his uh, subsequent games, shall right. we say. Uh, but to, but uh, not today. But this week they announced um, or and revealed a design for the game called Elements. Now that game is uh, is designed by Team Pinball for uh, Andrew's um, Pinball Adventures company. Right. And so the way it works is Team Pinball are a design studio. They they come up with the designs and work with artists and software programmers in order to produce or to create a product which Andrew can then take and get made locally in um, in, in Canada, which is where right. he's based. 
Um, so far, I haven't actually produced any games, but... Um, I was so going, going to say, we're still waiting for Pony Factory to be manufactured. Yeah, we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, uh, as indeed is he. But, but but he has announced you know, a whole slew of like, about eight different titles that are in, in, the, in the pipeline, even if uh, I haven't actually produced one of them yet. But um, the, Team Pinball produced a game, ship, ship a play field, a complete work, flippable game, with artwork and software over to Andrew, and then it's up to him to get it uh, developed further and manufactured. So Team Pinball showed us what they've done, and they produce, uh, produced a, uh, a three-flippered game for uh, called Elements. It's uh, designed by Joseph Jose from France, uh, artwork by Attila Sabo, um, I think it's from Hungary, but I'm not entirely sure, uh, mechanics from Romain Fontaine, our uh, our good friend, who's also right. in France, of course. Um, and the concept is from Andrew, in uh, from Pinball Adventures. Right. Now so, it. Uh, um, so what's on the playfield? Well, there's. Um, I guess the, the main thing you would you would immediately see is this large red um, octagonal insert that's in the middle of the playfield. It's just just above the flippers, kind of in. Um, there are some inserts just immediately above the flippers, but it's it's kind of between the slingshots almost, and it's it's got infinity lighting in it, so it looks like those those mirror back glasses, mm-hmm. but we can't really see what it does at the moment. I think it's just an insert, um, but it it looks like it could be a, a funnel, but it doesn't look funnel shaped, so I, it would, wouldn't be hexagonal if or octagonal, I should say. It was going to be a funnel because the ball would hit the edges and wear it down. So I'm assuming it's an insert, which um, can can light up in different ways, either statically or dynamically, with animating LEDs uh, being underneath it, which mm-hmm. uh, could be interesting. Um, as you said, three flippers. It's got a uh, a sort of mini playfield area, the top left hand corner, with three drop targets and a stand up target. I think. Uh, two rollover lanes at the top, uh, a right ramp, and two uh, U-turn ramps, I suppose. One one sort of uh, above where the uh, the octagonal insert is, and one further up that actually goes underneath the the, the upper right ramp. So that's interesting. There's a, it looks like there's a kick out on the right hand side as well. I'm not sure if there's a drop target there. There might be as well. But um, yeah, it's 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 you know it's not a hugely complex. Playfield because um, that's generally not what's what's required for these uh, pinball adventure titles. Mm-hmm. But uh, in fact, I think there's a kick out on the uh, on the upper left as well on as, as on the mid right. So a couple of kick outs as well and, and drop targets in the uh, in the U turn lane on the upper right, a bit like uh, TNA, I think. No, that's oh, no. Rick and Morty. Oh no, no, I knew there's drop target tricks on one of them. Yes. Um, yes, of course, uh, TNA inline drops, um, U-turn ramp, uh, U-turn lane uh, drop targets on uh, Rick and Morty, as you say. And didn't I see uh, double uh, two spinners in in uh, in one of the horseshoe yeah. lanes? Yeah, the left-hand one has a spinner on either side as well, which uh, looks interesting. I'm not sure exactly how the where the switches are going to go for that. It looks a bit tight to me, but it'd uh, uh, be nice if they're optical ones, but I doubt whether they are. Um, that's it, really. Um, there's, a, there's a sort of there's, there's a little, there's a mini U-turn lane, I suppose, on the left-hand side, just on the just above the uh, out lane. So I suppose you'd almost say there are three U-turn lanes on this game. Right. It's so if, if if you're really curious what this looks like and you have no idea what we're talking about, then uh, maybe look up the Facebook page of Team Pinball, uh, where you can actually uh, see, uh, well, the top post at the moment is. Uh, is actually the the, the playfield uh, also uh, well? There's a couple of pictures uh, also with the uh, the artwork that's supposed to go on there, so so you can get a better idea of what the game will look like in the end. Yeah, I mean, I think just just from looking at the the white wood or the bare wood, in fact, in this case, uh, or the white board, as some might call it, the um, it, it looks like a very sort of light, airy game. But when you look at the artwork, the artwork is all um, heavy, dark colours, looks very sort of classical, um, sort of, um, uh, I would say, god godlike, with uh, um, winged serpents and uh, God knows what else going on in there. Um, and 
knights in armor and yeah it looks looks pretty heavy sort of almost like heavy metal type artwork on it more than, uh, than any kind of light theme so i think it's, it's going to be a, a dark game but um i don't know it, it certainly looks to me at least uh, more interesting than the than the punny factory layout they've right. got a lot more shots and a lot more features on the play field okay so um yeah, and then um, well, you pointed out to me, and I'll, I'll just mention it here that the uh, the pinballbuzz dot com website, uh, which is the uh, actually the website of Pinball Adventures, uh, which uh, is the manufacturer of these games, mm-hmm. uh, is currently under construction or actually gone. Yeah, it's just uh, just a sign that uh, I kind of thought that the, um, the days of seeing websites that said they're under construction was uh, was long gone. That's sort of something from back in the early 2000s. But no, Pinball Adventures has gone retro and they have a uh, an under-construction sign on their website. Although, if you wanted to know what was on it before that, you can use the Wayback Machine and uh, and have a look at previous versions of it where you can see uh, all about the, the upcoming games as well because uh, all those are listed there with um, artwork ideas, at least, and uh, intentions of what they're going to do with them. And right. also uh, the the the, uh, the YouTube account as well for Pinball Adventures that is still there, um, and on there you can you can watch the the making of, which is uh, all a bit weird, have making of games that haven't actually been made yet, but you can watch making of games for uh, making of videos for the Punny Factory, um, including one which <laughs> which got uh, a certain amount of criticism I think recently on uh, pin side um, but I'll let you uh, watch that for yourself it's uh, it's called whiteboard video for the punny factory which I think is what Andrew's calling the whitewood version so uh, okay. have a look on uh, YouTube for uh, pinball adventures and uh, you can see f- uh, five videos there I'm sure there used to be more but uh, okay. maybe not right so moving on to uh, well let's say Jersey Jack pinball yeah um well, you know, they're obviously busy doing uh, uh, Guns N' Roses. You know, that's, uh, that's, that's going to keep them busy for a long time. They are currently building, or at least were very, very recently, building uh, limited edition models. Right. So those are, or were, very recently on the line. Um, Is there any, any news on the development or um, the, um, uh, well, the playfield issues that, that um, have been addressed uh, by several people uh, the past couple of weeks or months even. And um, uh, in some cases, Jersey Jack offered a solution, and in some cases, people weren't happy with that solution. So is there any news on that? No. Uh, I was going to say, over here in the UK, now it's summertime, and that's what's known as cricket season. And I think when it comes to news coming out from Jersey Jack Pinball about... Um, about solutions to their playfield problems we're also hearing crickets so i don't think we're going to see or hear anything made public about that at the moment i think they're just carrying on producing games you know, to an extent if people keep buying games why why would anybody change anything um i just deal with those those um in, uh, situations as and when they occur okay and, yeah, I don't think uh, I don't think we're going to see anything anything made public at least about right. that at all. Well, speaking of making things public, uh, one thing that they did make public is a new web shop. At last, yes, yes, we've been waiting. I think we've mentioned it in two months, but pinballwizard dot com was a domain that they registered a long time ago, and uh, with us, well, they're coming soon, yes, rather than under construction, it did say coming soon, um, on it, and it did finally open, just uh, this week, I believe, and, um, well, there's not a huge amount in it at the moment, but I'm sure there'll be more added over, over the coming weeks and months, but at the moment, if you just want JJP branded uh, merchandise, then all, all they can offer you currently is a, is a Jersey Jet Pinball T-shirt and face mask. So not, not quite at the uh, global lifestyle brand status just yet, but but I'm sure building up to it. But there's, there's quite a lot more uh, Guns N' Roses merchandise available there to go along with the, with the game. And it, it is uh, pinball Guns N' Roses rather than just Guns N' Roses generic stuff. 
So it's got the, it's got the flippers on the logo. So uh, you can get a, a patch, a T-shirt, various posters and banners. And, uh, and that's also where you can buy the new Guns N' Roses topper. Right. Which, and uh, I do have a question about that because I've seen it. It, it looks like the, uh, uh, well, the sign out of a, outside of a theater uh, mm, saying like uh, who's, who's playing tonight and it says uh, sold out as well and uh, what have you, the very classical uh, way. If you Once you see it, you know exactly what I probably... Uh, what what I mean, mm-hmm. um, but I understood that Topper is actually a third party Topper, and it's not the official Topper, which still has to be revealed. Oh, uh, that's not my understanding. I thought it. I thought when I saw it, it said in the advertising that it was, it was the official, the only official branded well, as, GNR. As, as, f- as far as I understood it, it's not being uh, uh, mentioned anywhere on on the social media of Jersey Jack Pinball as far as I could see. Uh, it, it has been mentioned by distributors of mm-hmm. Jersey Jack Pinball. I understood it's uh, uh, developed by a third party, and uh, it's interesting to see that uh, the Jersey Jack Pinball webshop is offering it, but um, not officially announced by Jersey Jack Pinball, um, as, far as, um, I, as far as I can tell. But maybe I'm wrong, so correct me if I'm wrong. Well, I'm uh, a little... Little um, critical here because I'm going to say I was, I was when I saw it I was hugely underwhelmed by it. I thought, is that it? Because that that just looks like an illuminated bit of uh, perspex with some printing on it. Right. That um, it, I don't know if it does anything other than, other than just light up. Whether it's got animation of the lights, but it's, it's only bottom lit. There, there's no backlighting as far as I can see to it. It looks almost like the uh, the original Wizard of Oz one that was that was a, a sheet of essentially that was green, but this is just um, this is printed and um, bottom lit and just fits on top of the game. That said, it's one hundred ninety nine dollars, so you're not exactly well, that's uh, breaking a bargain the bank. for a topper these days. Well, exactly, that's what I thought. But um, it did it did seem to me that the market was wide open for a, a more interactive. Uh, Guns N' Roses topper, especially considering the price of uh, you know, the, like the collector edition model, you think there'd be uh, be something uh, befitting of that. Um, the, and and you know how much lighting effect there is in the game and, and how interactive that all is. You, you would, would maybe that because it is so interactive. You, you really don't want any more going on on top of the game because it would just be distracting. Right. But so. but having seen other toppers which do animate to the sound um, in a much more exciting way. I, I was a bit bit let down by uh, what they came out with, but for the price, I well, can't really argue, I suppose. Uh, well, that, well, it's up to taste, I suppose. Uh, what I, uh, if, if we're disco- discussing issues with toppers, um, uh, personally, I seem to, to um, sort of, well, I wouldn't say object, but I'm like, if a topper is basically nothing more than a bigger logo of the what the game is called, uh, mm-hmm. which we see more and more, and in on gun on this Guns N' Roses topper, the, the the Guns N' Roses flipper logo is also present, but it's right above uh, the trans light, <laughs> which already has the logo. So I'm like, why would you put it on top of the game as well? It's already there. Well, I suppose uh, that's it's, it's illuminated. If you're playing in a darkened room, at least you can see it, I suppose. Or are we talking about the one that's on the back glass? No, well, there's one on the back glass, mm. and then right above it is the topper one. So I'm like, what's the point of putting another... The, the logo is already there. Do some... I would appreciate it more, I suppose, um, if you did something with, with the, the game or team members or something with a Guns N' Roses logo that's not... Uh, on top of the uh, or on the back glass or or something like that, you know. I I get that it's a cool logo, but if it's already there, why put another one on top of it? Mm. That that's yeah. sort of my issue. That but but that's with I'm taking this one as an example, and yeah. I, uh, um, uh, it's not fair in the sense that um, other toppers have the same uh, uh, issue, I suppose. Not every, but the Black Knight one doesn't have that. It's the moving head with the flames, and uh, uh, that's really cool. It doesn't have to say Black Knight because everybody can read it's Black Knight. It's on the back glass. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah, oh, I, I agree with you. Yeah, uh, although I, I suspect if there was any any obvious imagery that they could have used up there, they probably already used it within the game, so it would only be repetition. And right. and of course, even more difficult with the. the 
with a high profile license like uh, Guns N' Roses that they're very limited on what they can actually put it put it on there. I'm sure right. it all has to go through all the uh, authorization stages. And well, approval. Oh, I agree with you there that it's probably easier to to license this um, uh, or use the, the the logo that's already been approved. Although I can imagine uh, there's also a, a a cross logo with um, uh, the skulls of the uh, the band members. Uh, which I think was used on the earlier Guns N' Roses pinball machine, or at mm-hmm. least on the artwork of of their uh, one of their uh, previous albums. It would be cool to do put something like that on top of the game, which lights up, but it's not completely in line with how that how the game is designed. So, no, maybe it could be a third party one then. Uh, that uh, I've, I've certainly seen another topper which I think would fit very well on top of there, and, and is a lot more dynamic. Than uh, than the one that we do, that we are currently looking at, but uh, right. that that will hopefully be announced in this coming month. But we'll, we'll cover that later. Um, elsewhere, Jersey Jack Pinball. Um, we've already said that Guns and Roses limited edition is currently in production, but that hasn't stopped them going back and adding some uh, some features to older games. In particular, The Wizard of Oz, the very very first. Right. Yeah, so, I think I think we mentioned that in our last podcast, or at least that it was coming. I think it came yeah, out it did. right when we recorded our uh, previous podcast. So, so the game is now um, a com- compatible with Scorbit integration and uh, uh, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and all that boring stuff that you love to uh, uh, <laughs> get in boring, detail about. It's exciting. <laughs> Yeah, is it? Uh, oh, oh, yeah. sorry about that. No, for, for all those updates that are going to be coming out for the Wizards of Oz in the future. Um, then you can uh, automatically download them um, whenever that happens. And um, yeah, Bluetooth audio, nice feature. Um, I think if you if you want to wear headphones and, and listen to your game, that's uh, I, I know Wizard of Oz came with the, uh, the with the jack and the volume control on the front, so you could plug in. But uh, now you can do wi- wireless, and of course, easily feed external speakers or amplifiers. So that's quite useful. And, and score bit is. I think catching on in a big way. Certainly uh, at our club, there's more and more games. We're buying more and more score bit um, board kits to put into various games. So uh, you know, hopefully that will become a, a big thing and uh, we, can, we can play games and have leaderboards across across the world, which is fun. In fact, I think at the moment, I think only Dialed In is the, only, is the game that hasn't received that update yet. I think all the others have. Okay, well... So I that, suppose it, it, that that won't take long. I suppose. No, it's, it's a modern modern kit, so uh, I'm sure they're they're getting around to it. But they they're not actually putting a timeline on when these things are released. Of course, it'll come when it comes. But as you say, I don't think it'll be that long. So uh, and then they have the whole range uh, up until Guns N' Roses, all uh, enabled with Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and Scorbit. So right, okay. So I suppose that covers it for Jersey Jack. I think it does. Yep. Okay, let's move on next door to um, their good neighbours, Stern Pinball. Yeah, indeed. Stern of, uh, well, there's lots of small bits of news this time. I don't think there's any sort of earth-shattering um, no. news report from them. Yeah, so, so, let's start, uh, so what's let's on start the line? Off. Well, at the moment, we believe that uh, limited editions of The Mandalorian uh, are in production. Right. So they... Um, they uh, are, I think they're produced second, aren't they? There's, there's an initial run of pros, which goes out to operators, then the limited editions, uh, and then some more pros normally, and then the premiums come last. And then probably some more pros. So, uh, But of, of the three models we produced, um, the pros always come out first so they can get them out into arcades and things um, in time for, for launch parties and so on. Yeah, uh, But um, the limited editions are, are there at the moment. Yeah. So, uh, speaking of the Mandalorian, I'm not sure whether it's fair to mention, but from what I hear from people uh, that actually played the game, and mm-hmm. I've uh, only seen a handful of comments, I would say, um, but the general consensus is that it's very disappointing that the Grogu toy doesn't do anything. Mm. Yeah, it's almost wasted playfield space, really, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, uh, it uh, it's a pity, you know. I mean, uh, well, others have talked about it, but uh, it's not that just people are talking about it. But but if you see that the experience from people playing the game is, and and they are like, well, it's just a static toy; it doesn't do anything. 
Yeah, that's a, a missed opportunity, I would say. Yeah, I, th- I think we're agreed on that. But um, we're talking about Mandalorian and, uh, and and also talking about the order of um, of game pro- or model production. It was interesting, just leaping ahead to what we normally cover right at the end about the game code. That there has been there have been two updates actually for the Mandalorian this month, version 0.56, point five six, not point sorry, not point nine. Five and 0.96. I think it's fine for my nap. <laughs> <laughs> but they came out in quick succession. But the interesting thing is that, that they only came out for the Pro model. And I'm guessing that's because the Pro was released early and had earlier code on. Whereas the, the later, well, the, the uh, limited editions that are being produced now will have the, this code in already and premiums will have it or later code when that is made. So if you had one of the early uh, Pro models, then some code update is available for you, which um, which does a lot, really, in uh, bringing it up to the current standard. Well, we won't go into it all because uh, it's it's boring if, if you can't see it or play it. So, <laughs> yeah, just to mention, that thank you. you. Have an early pro updated. Right. So, um, what I found interesting, and uh, um, uh, I'm quite sure you as well, uh, Stern Pimble did send out a press release. Uh, stating that Tom Capera is joining Stern as director of mechanical engineering. Yes, that's right. Now, um, uh, any anybody not familiar with the industry might say, like, "Oh, good for Tom." But the fun fact actually is that Tom has been working at Stern uh, for years already. Uh, but apparently, uh, uh, as a freelancer uh, mm. with his own uh, 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 engineering. Uh, company or whatever, or, uh, yeah. what, what do you, what do you, what do you, uh, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so, um, but according to the press release, he will be uh, lead mechanical engineering. He will be working in the Whitewood Lab, the model shop, and the bill on materials group. Well, he, he'll certainly be in charge of those and leading them. That's right. Yeah, he he might even be the only one working in those. <laughs> Don't think they're quite that lean yet. I think uh, for the materials uh, group, but interesting group is only one person. But um, right. yes, so Tom, as we uh, just a little bit of backstory there. Tom, as we know, um, worked at Williams, um, right. where he's a designer of uh, Cactus Canyon. Indeed, he was. Uh, he was uh, basically he's done a lot of work with George Gomez. Really, he he jo- he was brought into. Game, a coin op, I suppose, in the first place by George to work at Midway on video games. When George went over to Pinball, Tom joined him fairly fairly soon after, where he was doing mechanical engineering. And uh, then, as uh, the the traditional style of Pinball was coming to an end, and they were getting ready for the Pinball Two Thousand. Uh, Revenge from Mars, the first title, and then obviously Star Wars after that. Um, they were looking for a game, or they were, oh, they were looking for a, a new design team, basically at that point. And so they they sort of said, well, okay, who's going to bring us out a game? And uh, and Tom had joined up with Matt Coriel, and um, they together had worked on the Cactus Canyon game, and it wasn't quite ready at that point. But when when Williams asked uh, various people to put together a, a game which they can use to to plug the gap between uh, the end of regular pinball production and the start of pinball 2000. Uh, Tom and Matt produced, uh, well, brought up their, their Cactus Canyon game, and that was picked. And um, and so it was. They made, uh, was it 1,000? I think it was uh, Cactus Canyon games before Revenge from Mars began. 903, to be precise. Thank you very much. I knew somebody with uh, a knowledge of the history of pinball would be in... And obviously Gary's not going to do it, so uh, so thank you for for stepping in there. Right. Um, so, so yeah, and was uh, so, so, uh, oh, yeah. go on. Sorry, that's okay. That's what I was going to say. And since then, um, when uh, when I was in Williams closed, George uh, went over to Stern, and um, and Tom was uh, joined him there as well, and has been doing yeah, a lot of work well, on various games, including yeah. I have a list through. here. Oh, I okay. have a list here. Yeah. So. Um, well, Tom is credited for uh, uh, the design of the Rolling Stones, which came mm. out in 2011. So George was already there for 
uh, some time, I believe, or at least working freelance for Stern. And um, uh, I even heard a rumor that George might have designed Guns N' Roses, or, sorry, the Rolling, Rolling Stones, Stones. Yes. Rolling Stones, but uh, wasn't allowed at the time to uh, take credit for it uh, no. due to other contractual it, it obligations. Was working and, elsewhere, I think, at the time. Right. And uh, for that reason, Tom Capera has been credited for the design, and he obviously must have been involved, but. Um, not sure whether he designed the um, entire game. That's a good question for him once we get the opportunity to uh, to talk to him. But um, he's also been involved in, and this is a, uh, I'll make this short. Um, uh, Transformers: The Pin, Star Trek uh, for Stern, uh, Avengers: The Pin. Um, well, Star Trek, uh, all three editions, uh, uh, I would say. Game of Thrones, all three editions. Woe Nelly, Big Juicy, Melons. Um, the Beatles. And Elvira's House of Horrors. Is there, is there uh, any uh, credit for that information? Uh, IPDB. Thank you. So uh, and and the heavy metal uh, game. So in, and all the, on all the games just mentioned, uh, he's been credited for mechanical engineering. Um, so obviously, it's not a, uh, a completely new position uh, for for Tom to to become well director of mechanical engineering. Yeah, I, I think I think on at least some of those games, the more recent ones like the Beatles and Elvira, he was the uh, the, the lead project engineer. On that game, so um, I think he had quite a you know, heavy involvement with that. But also, you know, something which maybe people don't know is that he's been very heavily involved in building toppers for Stern games, all yeah. the way up until I think the Monsters. I think that might have been the last. Um, but before that, yeah, he, he I think he basically did all or designed all the toppers for Stern games prior to that point and after that i think it probably got a bit more a bit more expensive and a bit more complicated so <laughs> there might be more people involved in it after that but uh, right so yeah. it's interesting that 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 um while he's uh lead in mechanical engineering there's nothing mentioned about toppers no no i know it's uh that's not normally something that's listed on uh, IPDB um or indeed no, also, widely also, known who, who, ne- who neither in the also. press release no no, but uh, I, I, in research, I, I did listen to uh, a, an interview that he, he did, and uh, uh, I forget exactly which one it was, but uh, I, or I would give them credit to it, but uh, I can't remember okay. which one it was. But it was, uh, I think it might have been uh, uh, the Pinball Show or, or something like that. Um, it was yeah. certainly one of those those brands. And uh, it, was a, it was a good interview, so congratulations to whoever it was who was doing it. But, uh, yes, I wanted to get some background information, and that's where uh, Tom was interviewed. And I, I reckon, reckon, recommend you listen to it if you're uh, interested in some of the sort of inner workings of how, how Pinball is put together. It's got a good good story. You know, his his story covers you know, a, a lot of different companies and, uh, and a number of different uh, designers and, and ways of working. So it's interesting to see how, how he's been in the business a long time and uh, how it's changed. Yeah, okay. It, what, what I find interesting, and then we'll leave it at, uh, with, with uh, Tom Capera, is that uh, the rumor has it that uh, Chicago Gaming will be remaking Cactus Canyon as their next remake title. Uh, so basically, Tom Capera would have his old game come out <laughs> again while he's working for a competitor. Yeah, that's right. Um, as part of that interview, he was actually asked about that and, and said he had, he'd had no involvement with Chicago Gaming about uh, about remaking that. Which is, I suppose, is a pity, but... Um, oh, it well. is. But yeah, and yeah. Uh, especially since uh, he... Um, uh, well, he used to freelance up to recently, so he could have had any um, uh, influence or collaboration. I suppose now that he's director of mechanical engineering... <laughs> Uh, that chance that or that ship has sailed, I suppose. I think it has. It, w- it will be interesting to see if any of the intended features that were uh, planned to be on Cactus Canyon do make it into the remake. Should that be uh, produced shortly? Right. Okay. So, getting back to uh, Stern Pinball, mm. uh, Gary Stern, uh, to be precise. Well, first of all, congratulations, Gary, um, yes. with his seventy uh, sixth birthday. Yeah. Happy birthday to Gary. And um, uh, if, uh, for those, um, uh, well, let's put this in different order. So, 
uh, Gary was also interviewed in uh, 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 two uh, different shows uh, the past month. Mm -hmm. uh, one was on uh, Shack News and the other was on uh, WGN Radio. Um, the WGN Radio had an interesting title, How Stern Pinball Became the Largest Pinball Manufacturer in the World, and then it didn't cover that topic <laughs> at all. <laughs> um, right. And uh, which is a pity because, well, uh, I hate to say it, but uh, um, for those, uh, well, everybody who was around in 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 the uh, uh, the late nineties and the early two thousands know that Stern basically became the biggest pinball manufacturer because William shut the doors. Yeah, if, if you're the only manufacturer, you, you're the biggest. Not, not not quite an effort, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> and to be, and it, com to be completely fair and not to step on Stern, but Williams used to sell. Lots and lots more games than Stern or uh, Sega Pinball uh, did in those days. But um, I'm, I'm uh, uh, getting back on point. Yes. Um, well, two interviews, basically uh, the usual that you get from Gary Stern. Um, uh, the three-legged stool, the story about Sam Williams uh, becoming uh, uh, owner of Williams Pinball and uh, back in the day. Sam Stern, I would hope. Uh, yeah, sorry, uh, Sam Stern, his father. And... Um, um, well, basically, no news there. So, uh, of, uh, uh, if you if you heard Gary Stern talk at at, at public seminars, um, you know what is uh, what the story is yeah. that he's going to tell. If you are, however, interested in uh, hearing another side of Gary Stern, uh, then I'd like to remind people of uh, the, uh, the the the. Uh, double episode interview, if I'm not mistaken. That's correct, yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, interview with Gary Stern that uh, you and I did last year as a, 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 a part of our uh, series of podcasts uh, when Gary turned uh, 75. That's right. In which, and which we basically steered away from all the standard issues that he discussed and actually went into details and, and uh, his history in pinball on, on uh, lots of parts that he usually does talk about, and that interview has been uh, very uh, uh, greatly received. I uh, yeah, but it's a very popular one, I think, for uh, yes, for us. I've uh, been downloaded or listened to uh, a lot, and uh, well, it's you know, it's it's nice to hear Gary talking in a different way because we we've, we've seen him turn up at uh, shows so many times, and you no, know, obviously he he's a pro. He ta tailors it. For his audience, so on those on the Radio Shack and WGN radio t uh, interviews, he's talking to non pimple people. So he's you know he's playing it very sort of down to earth and um, non technical, and just talk about you know, how pimble is still there and not just still there but thriving. And right. uh, he's he's always the salesman at the end of the day, but uh, that's not what we wanted from that interview. So we we wanted to know. You know the details, which you don't, as you say, you don't hear him talk about often. So, uh, yeah, have a listen. Anyway, it was uh, a, a year ago um, for his seventy-fifth birthday, and uh, it was a kind of a landmark interview, I think. So, uh, yeah, give it a listen if you haven't heard it already. It's definitely worth yeah. it. We got very, very good response to that. So, um, and also interesting, uh, Stern is on the road again. Well, mm. actually, shows are happening again, and in this case, we're talking uh, industry trade shows, I suppose. Um, and Stern has been present at uh, two, which we uh, can mention. First, there was the uh, the International Bowl Expo in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, that was held on June twenty third and twenty fourth. And uh, Stern was there with um, three games, uh, I suppose. Um, they yep, had two people, right. uh, people uh, two people present: uh, Evan Kirby and uh, Ryan Cravens. Uh, the games present were uh, Stranger Things, Jurassic Park, and The Mandalorian. And um, uh, I suppose it's a good thing that Stern is actually showing up at a at a, uh, a bowl expo because, from what I understand, and I haven't been to any bowling centers in the US, but uh, pinball used to be a very uh, 
common part of bowling centres uh, for those who didn't want to play bowling. Absolutely. I think it's just like, you know, like having a hot dog stand and or, uh, concessions and uh, having a crane game, all that kind of stuff. Having a pinball or, a, or a, an arcade there, with inclu- including pinball machines, is you know, sort of standard equipment to find in a bowling uh, alley. So, yeah, I think... Uh, I think teaming up with Player One Amusement Group, uh, who were there, whose who stand it was on, um, and they are um, a, a North American distributor for, for Stern Pinball, who are exhibiting at the International Bowl Expo, uh, makes makes very good sense. And uh, keep that link going because it's uh, you know you, pinball needs to to keep in with the the existing market as, as much as it needs to to grow the market and expand into new areas. So right. Now, now let's that. let's just hope that um, what I understood the trend is that more and more bowling alleys are closing down. So let's hope that trend gets stopped and actually more bowling centers open up again. Yeah, that's because right. they would, so so they can put in pinball machines as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and the other um, uh, trade show uh, that I was going to mention is the um, uh, annual amusement expo, uh, which was held this year in uh, Las Vegas again. Uh, which is actually uh, started June thirtieth and uh, still going on today. And uh, Stern is uh, represented there uh, by a quite a larger team, mm. uh, in- including Gary Stern, John Buscalia, Evan Kirby, Patrick Powers, Roper Fuentes, and Ryan Cravers again. So um, big uh, presentation uh, or representation, I would say. And mm. they also uh, brought more games, six to be precise, Avengers, Jurassic Park, Deadpool, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Led Zeppelin, and Star Wars. Surprisingly, no Mandalorian. No, that's right. No, Mandalorian wasn't there, considering it had been at, uh, at the show the week before. But uh, maybe they're... Um well, actually, I can't think of a good reason why they shouldn't have it there. It's, it's their latest product, it would make sense. But uh, they didn't. So anyway, um, yeah, there's um, Stern regular uh, exhibitors at uh, Amusement Expo, uh, been there for as long as I can remember. And, right. uh, they it's were, a fun show, by the it way. It is, I, yeah. uh, Yes. I mean, We've this, both, this both year, visited the, the, yeah. I was going to say, this year it's back, as you said, it's back in Las Vegas. So I think the last time it was held, which would, would have probably been two years ago, Given the the uh, pandemic, I think it was uh, it moved to New Orleans for, for one year. Right, that was the show where Hot Wheels was introduced. Ah, right, good point. Yeah, okay. Um, and it, actually, that was last year, and it was just before the pandemic. Uh, everything uh, closed down. Okay, yeah, my, my, my timeline's a bit out there, but it certainly makes sense um, if, if Hot Wheels was uh, debuted there because that yeah that makes. Uh, that fits in with uh, with the timeline there, but uh, yeah, Stern always have a good good display. In previous years, they've they've, they've held tournaments as well, uh, IFPA tournaments at, uh, at Amusement Expo, and people who want to play in the tournaments will be able to get special passes. Of course, at the moment, and it's something we come on to a bit later, um, no IFPA sanctioned tournaments are in place, so uh, it was it was strictly an exhibit this year. Um, so I have been practicing for nothing. <laughs> Been practicing uh, for nothing. If you were planning to get over to Las Vegas, yes, that's for sure. But right. uh, but no, um, yeah, six games, nice display, and um, I don't know what the next show for them is. But um, no, actually, I don't know what the next show for them is. I was going to look yeah. in the calendar, but well, uh, I, I I do have a feeling what they will be doing tonight. Uh, a little bit of sidetracking, but um, I believe that the uh, um, the opening of the Pinball Hall of Fame in Las Vegas actually was scheduled to tie in with uh, the uh, the ending of, of the International Expo, and that's tonight. You're absolutely right. I, I knew it was today. I'd forgotten that it was also tying in with that event. But yeah, yeah, the the official opening has been soft opening there um, for well over a month now for those people who. Uh, I think you had to buy a T-shirt in order to be to, to get in, but uh, mm. but now I don't see Gary Stern buying a T-shirt. <laughs> so <laughs> no, I'm sure he'd be uh, an honorary guest. Anyway, I'm sure Tim would not um, skimp on that. But um, whether it would or not, it's uh, it is as you say the grand opening. So we we look forward to seeing some uh, some exciting pictures from, from that and, and video 
Uh, right. From the actual... That's later, later today. And, yeah, uh, possibly tonight. already. Well, yeah, when we are recording, and we try to put out this podcast as soon as possible, but it might be old news by the time that you hear this. Well, I don't think there's anything we particularly need to cover on that, other than the fact that it's happening, unless, uh, unless there, are, there are some outrageous um, events take place that we need to report. But I, I can't imagine that happening at the uh, the Pinball Hall of Fame. Okay, so here's an uh, outcry to everybody who wants to do outrageous events. <laughs> and, and if you happen to be in Las Vegas tonight, which is uh, July 1st, um, oh well. Yeah, okay. or if anybody's going to do outrageous events, can you try and not do them on the first day of the month when we're doing our podcast? Just do them a few days before, give us a chance to catch up. Right, we'd love to report on those. Yes. Um, yes, and uh, we'd love... Uh, to receive uh, a notification on the embargo, uh, so so we can actually <laughs> report properly on it. Yes, quite right. Okay, I think uh, I think we're probably done with Stern for for this particular section. Mm, yeah, I think so too. I think okay. we covered everything that uh, that's on the list. Okay, so let's move on um, to well uh, another pinball manufacturer, somebody who actually is manufacturing pinballs, and that's uh, Haggis Pinball. Who, in Australia, who are indeed in Australia, and uh, they they put out quite a few updates uh, this month, this month of June, that is right. Starting uh, on the fifth, when uh, Damien uh, reported that all the buyers of the uh, the, the uh, Fathom Revisited Mermaid Edition should have received their confirmation emails. Right, I think, I think we might have mentioned something to that. Uh, to that end well, we, uh, in the last one. But. Well, we mentioned that they all sold out, that the, all yeah. 250 available units were sold. Yeah, well, everyone should have received their confirmation by the start of the month, and if you haven't got it by now, then uh, definitely something has gone wrong. What you should also have received, if, if you joined, is uh, the pack of goodies that you get from joining their Clan Haggis Supporters Club. Now, there are... Uh, and shows of items which you get when you join, and um, unfortunately they weren't all available um, right at the point when they needed to be sent out. So, so the team have sent out everything they've got to everyone, and there'll be a couple of small items, a pin badge and, and a medal or something like that, which uh, weren't weren't in uh, hadn't arrived at the, uh, the Haggis factory in time. And will be sent out separately in a, in a separate small package. So uh, right. you get get two packages of goodies sent to you. Woohoo! So twice the fun, two goodie bags. Yeah, I know. Yeah, the uh, suspense is uh, s- suspending. Um, then also um, earlier in the month. Now this is this is probably in a way sort of old news because it's probably no longer um, applicable. But um, right at the start on the eighth, I think. Um, they were uh, Haggis Pinball were advertising for staff um, because they're obviously Actually, expanded. they still are. They still are. They are still looking on the on the, on the lookout for uh, personnel. Okay, great. Um, well, they were looking for some additional roles in the factory, including assembly line uh, workers and CNC operators. And um, if those are your skills and you fancy working in the pinball business. Then uh, you can contact um, Haggis Pinball. You can email them at employment at haggispinball.com, or I'm sure you can find their details elsewhere and give them a call or uh, get in contact in, uh, in other various ways. I, I do know that up till now they, they seem to have about 13 staff working there now, uh, with a few more joining over the next few days, which made me think they probably got everybody they need. But uh, if you know that they're, they're still looking, then uh, and and you and you haven't um, contacted them yet and want to, do it now. Right. So and um, then the uh, 27th of uh, June, just a couple of days ago. Uh, a new update video was uh, shared on the Haggis social uh, media platforms mm-hmm. uh, in which they explained that uh, they are currently under lockdown again due to uh, a COVID-19 or 20 or mm-hmm. 21 or COVID-D or whatever you want to call it. Yep. Um, which means, um, well, they are still able to continue to work uh, because they are... Uh, allowed to go to 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 move on, but they are having uh, or facing delays getting um, uh, the factory fitted um, with stuff that they need. So if they need uh, screws or whatever, and usually you go to a hardware store and get them, and now it takes two, three, four days before they actually 
uh, receive them. Mm. Right. And uh, there's also a, uh, a shortage of timber, which is uh, causing uh, more delays. Um, that being said, uh, they are currently building um, 50 Kels games. Um, and that's what I understood the entire run. Yeah. So the right, entire yeah. run of uh, Kels is just 50 games. I'm not sure whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, at least it shows that uh, 50 people had enough uh, confidence in uh, in an upstart company like uh, Haggis to uh, to buy the Celts uh, Celts game, and obviously a lot more um, uh, regarding uh, Fathom revisited. Well, yes, absolutely. It sold out um, in, in short order before the uh, before the ordering window closed. Uh, they they did say that they were planning to start Fathom in July and get, with the current delays that they had in getting some of the parts that that's still the plan but uh, Damien's head is going to be more towards the end of July than the, the start or the middle which was their original plan but right. um, no as, as we mentioned before and we'll mention again um, supply line shortages and, and delays are affecting everyone right now so we're right. uh, if they're if they're able to um, just delay by a couple of weeks in their in their production of or start production of Fathom, um, then that's not a bad result, I'd say. Right. So, um, um, moving on uh, because I think we covered uh, everything yeah. to mention about hangers. I think so. Uh, uh, switching back to uh, to America, um, mm -hmm. American people, to be more precise, um, we were sort of expecting. A game announcement this month, but so far nothing. Yeah, well, uh, in in, in June at least we, was, we 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 were expecting something, and um, I, yeah, didn't really come, did it? Um, David, when he when he was on our podcast with uh, Mukesh and Nermal, uh, was was heavily hinting that they're expecting to announce something in June. And yet, um, it didn't happen. So, uh, whether that means that uh, the timing wasn't right, or the, or the game wasn't ready, or they too are experiencing uh, part shortages, uh, we don't know. But we're, I'm sure we'll find out uh, as soon as we can. Right. So, uh, in the meantime, I did check uh, the American Pinball Facebook page and uh, the Amusement Expo uh, Facebook page because, like I said last year, they introduced Hot Wheels at the show. So, I figured maybe they introduced a new game and didn't tell anybody <laughs> about it, but just revealed it to the industry. You're like, thinking. Yeah, but uh, again, I have to disappoint you, nothing uh, nothing yet. Okay. So, um, However... I did, no I did notice that um, they have a distributor called uh, the Gamma Group in Italy. I'm not sure whether it's a new distributor, but it was certainly news to me that they have a distributor in Italy. So if that's new, then congratulations. And otherwise, yeah. I'm still very happy that they have a distributor in, it, in, in Italy, which is, to me, a new name. Uh, it's not one of the, 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 the distributors for other brands. No, I, I was uh, in the same situation as you. I, I hadn't heard of them before, and uh, was pleased to see that uh, that uh, one of the things that, that American pinball are very very keen on now is pushing to to new markets and getting games to operators a lot more. And uh, it, it looks like that uh, that's that's one step that they've taken in in uh, in hooking up a Gemma or Gemma Group. In Italy, in order to supply operators, I think um, I don't think they're well well known in the uh, home supply market, they, but they might they might sell to other companies who do supply the home. So uh, right. if Hot Wheels becomes available a lot more over there, as as it probably should be, uh, good luck to them. And um, I think we can probably stick with Italy, can't we? A little bit uh, with our with our next company as we as yeah. we move over to to Pinball Brothers. Not yeah. Italian themselves, um, very much uh, Scandinavian in nature, but their uh, their alien game is um, I don't want to call it a remake necessarily because it's uh, it's the first proper production of the alien game, but that is being made by Padretti in uh, in Italy, and right. um, they have shipped a, a first full container of games over to Coin Taker in uh, in Pennsylvania, I think, isn't it? Um, was it was it Philadelphia? I mean, it's Pennsylvania, isn't it? Um, 
I'm not exactly sure. I haven't been there yet. But... Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, Cointaker have taken their, their first full container of games, of Alien games, and uh, yeah. are sending them out. Couldn't see how many games were in that container. Um, could be anywhere from uh, 12 to 33 or something like that. Depends on the size of the container, I suppose. Yeah, I think I saw a picture that indicated it was a full container rather than a short one. So, yeah, I hope it would be 33. But, right. Yep, we don't know for sure. But that's, uh, that's, that's kind of like the, the latest developments from Pinball Brothers and, uh, and getting the Alien game out in, uh, into the hands of the people who have bought it. Right. Okay. Well, congrats to them. And uh, let's see. Well, I didn't, surprisingly, uh, and for two months now, I didn't see any pictures of uh, uh, more games being in production. No. So I'm not sure. Uh, I, I suppose they sold more than 33 games of, uh, of the Alien title. Um, so I'm assuming that it's still in production. Um, but there's no proof of that. So let's just hope for the best. I would certainly expect them to be carrying on at a pace. I don't think uh, they have any, well, I was going to say, I don't think they have any uh, COVID-related lockdowns in, in that part of Italy, but I don't know for sure, But because uh, these things can be very localised, can't they, in certain c- circumstances. So even We've seen that in uh, with Haggis as well, you know, only certain, certain parts of, uh, of Australia have been put into lockdown. So uh, it's... Uh, as far as I'm aware, though, they're, they're still manufacturing uh, at, at pace and getting and the games that uh, gone out so far from Progetti, um the sample ones in the first batch, all seem to have been very well received. So let's hope that all the production ones are in the uh, of the same standard. I'm sure they will be. Right. Okay. Well, that was all the news that we could find on uh, Pinball Brothers. So mm-hmm. let's move on um, to the. Um, um, probably lesser known Circus Maximus group um, at least the name might not ring a bell with that many people but that's the uh, the group of people that are uh, working on the remake of uh, the Pinball Circus and Capcom's Kingpin mm. yes um, being very very slow progress very very few updates indeed from uh, from anyone on the team yeah, um, especially considering this is a, both games are um, being uh, well in development, as I would say, uh, for for a couple of years now. Yeah, and they are games which have been built before, so you kind of know what it is you're building. In the case of uh, Python's Pinball Circus, there's a lot more work going into that game, but that's that's being put on the back burner while they were work, concentrating on the Kingpin project in order to. Um, Basically, raise some raise some funds in order to build the pinball circus game, but um, right. but you know, Kingpin has been built, it, the parts are known, but um, it all went very quiet. And with with some attempts to to redo the artwork, I think by Dave Christensen, with well, personally, I'd say limited success there. I don't think the, the artwork that he produced, while beautiful in itself, is necessarily suited to this this theme and this design of game. Right. Um, yeah, and uh, well, it's been fairly quiet because that artwork is already, I think, a couple of years old. Mm, yeah. But um, yeah, so there was an update from uh, Jimmy Lipham, who is uh, involved with actually uh, very uh, well a lot of pinball projects mm, for various yeah. uh, companies, uh, usually on the software end. Although he is uh, usually also the guy that has to step in whenever something explodes or <laughs> goes wrong and what have you. Uh, so we're very happy uh, that that uh, all these companies have access to Jimmy to clean up the mess that they uh, <laughs> get themselves into. Although that's probably not the nicest thing to say. I'm sure that's not his job title. (laughs) No, 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 exactly. But uh, no, Jimmy is a very talented uh, uh, software um, engineer, I suppose you can call it. Mm. And um, um, so he posted um, an update on the Kingpin project on the uh, Pinsight forum uh, where he explained um, where... The, the uh, where they are coming from, uh, what his role is in the in the uh, in in the project, and what the um, the things are that they are uh, running into um, to to uh, 
basically to make the game or remake the game. And uh, long story short, there's still a, a quite a few hurdles that they need to uh, to take. Um, challenges, if you want to, uh, to make it the, the whole thing work. But um, it seems to me that they are still confident that they will get there at some point. Um, and one of the interesting things, because I'm not going to detail everything that he said, and I suggest read this, do a search on uh, uh, on the uh, the Pinside forum, or uh, wait for the. Um, Pimmel Magazine newsletter where I link to the specific post uh, and you can read all the details um, uh, for yourself. Uh, but the interesting thing, or one of the interesting thing uh, I found is that nobody on the teams want to set up a production line for them to build games themselves. So that means they're, they will be sourcing out um, uh, the building of the game and uh, uh, several third parties are already uh, have shown interest. But it's still too early to talk to them because they don't know what they actually need because they don't have a working uh, prototype with all the new Macs and 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 parts and what have you. So, um, and what's also interesting, um, if you ever played a Kingpin uh, or played Capcom games, uh, they have a certain uh, feel to them. But uh, for the uh, uh, the production that they are planning, the, the, the current plan seems to be to switch to as much uh, Bally Williams parts as possible. Um, so that might actually give the game uh, that, that classic Bally Williams feel that a lot of people seem to love. Hmm. Yeah, well, I guess we're mainly talking about flippers, then, are we, rather than sort of ball guides or up kickers or slingshots or anything like that. Because those are the parts which are no, the most, to put it, hands-on, you know. They're the ones that which you have the most interaction with directly. And uh, obviously Kingpin itself has has you know, some, some flipper tricks that it plays in that it, it can weaken True. the flippers if you don't make the correct shots until until the point where you can't flip anymore and then basically you, your, your game is over, you, your ball dies and drains. So we need need to replicate that that feel of of how the flippers lose their power, which um, which needs to be you know, tuned to 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 work effectively and uh, right. give good feedback to the player. Yeah, well, um, I suppose this is where uh, Jimmy comes in mm. uh, because he will probably be the one programming the uh, the current uh, or the voltages being sent to uh, to the flippers to uh, to get that effect. Yep. Yep, almost certainly. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, well, we continue to wish to them good it. luck. And yeah, it's good to see an update, but uh, still get the feeling that they're a long way from home. Yes. Well, we're not. Or un- from the finish line, maybe <laughs> they are at home. Yeah. But <laughs> I say we're, we're we're reasonably familiar with getting updates that that uh, tell us that there's still a long way to go. Um, one of the other companies we should look at maybe was uh, was Deep Root Pinball. Right on on that particular note, um, no updates from them yet. Although the last update that we did have didn't reveal very much, but uh, other than to say they were experiencing continued delays, labour shortages, and uh, to offer some buyers um, a chance to to back out of their purchase if that's what they wanted, they were ex- well. It's generally expected they will give an update again. Um, in a, in a few days' time, really, after the uh, July the 4th uh, American Independence Day holiday. Hmm. So once everybody's back at work, um, maybe look look out for uh, an announcement from Deep Root Pinball saying how how they are currently doing on their plans to uh, to produce their, their first title, uh, for, Retro for Atomic sec- Zombie Adventureland. Yeah, for a second I was going to say how much more delays we are going to mm-hmm. expect in a sphere. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't expect there's going to be a, you know, a flash of light and a sudden appearance of uh, of a production line producing these games. So. Right. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, someone on uh, I forgot their name. Sorry about that. Uh, someone on Pinside pointed out that um, yeah, it was Blueberry Johnson, uh, I think, who's uh, always good on there for for delving into uh, the finances of uh, companies. Well, go ahead, tell the story. You're more. Uh, you probably know it better than I do. <laughs> oh, I, didn't, I didn't realize we even read the same story, but uh, but yeah. Um, well, it's just just a note that um, 
there's been a, a you know, basically a monthly um, payroll protection plan uh, series of loans given out by banks in order to support pinball, well not pinball, uh, companies across the whole of the US uh, and manufacturing in particular and um, and Deep Root Tech, um, who is I guess the parent company of Deep Root Pinball, they received um, a second tranche of loans and bear in mind these aren't loans, they're not payments. Right. So that they received um, basically just over one million dollars in uh, payroll protection loans in May. These figures coming out in um, in June, uh, having received almost a million in in April as well. Okay. Yeah, and I I, I, I do recall that it states for how many people uh, these uh, loans are or how many well salaries. I'm not sure whether. Uh, we can see that these people are paying, uh, being paid very well, or um, no, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what what new uh, deep root tech covers. It might be more than um, than just the uh, the pinball side because it might might cover deep root studios as well. Right. And um, although I did see, I think I saw a separate listing for deep root studios, so maybe that maybe that's different. But uh, there, there could be other other deep root entities that we're not familiar with or aware of who are also part of this. But I think it was, it was something like 64 employees, I think was, uh, that, that's just a, a rough recollection of a number that uh, could be entirely wrong. But um, that's, that's what, that's the number that comes to mind. I'm when looking it up right now. So oh, okay. give, me, give me a second. <laughs> sure. Okay. Well, um, I mean, obviously deep root are not unique in, uh, in getting these, these loans. They are available to all all large companies, and uh, right. Okay, so that's uh, I got the details. Okay, uh, great. Uh, here, um, so there's uh, two loans, uh, mm-hmm. uh, one of uh, seven hundred and fifty nine thousand. Well, let's say seven hundred and sixty thousand dollars for uh, forty seven jobs, and the other one is for two hundred ninety eight uh, thousand. For retaining eighteen jobs, and what's the total there? Those two? Yeah, it was just, slight, just over a million for um, yeah sixty five sixty five jobs in total. Oh, that's one out. <laughs> <laughs> that's not bad. So, um, so a million divided by sixty five. Uh, how much are these people making? <laughs> yeah, well, well, I'll let you uh, do the calculations on that. Um, of course, it's not all salaries. Um, that that money, of course. In fact, um, it could be that none of it is salary. It's meant to be, it's but it's meant to keep the company uh, afloat and and going. Um, and that was that was for May. And there was uh, there was a as we said before, there was a similar payment um, a month earlier. Right. So, uh, oh well. Um, so, unfortunately, I suppose that's all the news that yeah. there is for uh, for Deep Root. I think pinball. it is. Yeah. So uh, hopefully, so uh, somewhere soon, we we get flooded with new games uh, by Deep Root, and um, they turn out to be a highly successful pinball company. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm going to stop paying back some of that uh, that loan that they've uh, they've taken on. Yeah. Right. So okay, um, other companies. Yes. Well. Um, if I uh, uh, get to keep uh, to stay close to home, mm, um, yeah, I think you should. Dutch uh, Dutch pinball. Um, sad news, um, Very. not regarding uh, a game, but um, founding uh, member Jaap Nauta, who uh, has uh, had left the the company uh, due to his um, uh, illness, mm. uh, his battle against cancer, uh, passed away last uh, last month. Uh, which was very sad news because uh, Yap was a, uh, a very likable person. It was. Uh, if you, if, yes. And, um, well, it's uh, he didn't get that, that old. I think he was um, probably late 50s, early 60s, I suppose, maybe, or, or maybe even younger. Yeah, I said 50s. Um, yeah. yeah. And, um, well, uh, like I said, he already... Um, uh, resigned uh, from his duties in the company, but that doesn't mean that. Um, uh, well, he, he will be greatly missed. Yeah, his like legacy that. lives on in in both the company and and the game. 
Um, he's had so much involvement in in the creation of uh, the Big Lebowski and and of Dutch pinball, and he was he was the sort of the public face of it. I think really wasn't he? Uh, was standing up yep. at the shows, hosting all the seminars. You know, anyone who's seen him, um, seen him. I would say perform, but hosting a, a seminar will will he know how very full energetic. of life and energetic he was. Absolutely, and and likable yeah. as well. You know, he was uh, yeah. he didn't mind telling it as as it is, and uh, and he will be so sadly lost. But yes, anyway. absolutely, yeah. So, um, and in other Dutch pinball news, uh, I did text with um, uh, Barry, the uh, the uh, the owner of the company. Um, basically, he said there's. Not much news to report, and I asked about the uh, supply chain issues which they have been uh, mm. facing, and he expects that to be completely uh, an issue of the past in uh, the next uh, one or two weeks. Oh, right. And they are going full steam ahead. Great. Well, good news then to uh, to counter the, the tragic loss of now. Yep. I should say. Yes. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. So, um, then, uh, well, there's a few other companies and a few tidbits to uh, to address. Mm. Yeah. Uh, but we can do this very briefly. Homepin. Um, not much news other than that their uh, uh, Thunderbird toppers uh, are finally being assembled and packed. Uh, but there seems to be an issue with uh, shipping them out because of postal issues and what have you. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, last month we reported they were, they were finally being made, but uh, yeah. a shame to hear well, they haven't actually arrived yet or uh, had problems in getting them to the to I the suppose areas. you were a little bit early with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, uh, you, you were looking in your um, crystal ball and uh, you, you could foresee the news yeah. of the next month. Yeah, I, I kind of overshot a bit. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah. No, so can you tell us what we'll be discussing next month? <laughs> well, I could, but uh, it may not be that exciting, you see. So, or, or it could be too exciting. I don't want to get people overexcited in, in case some of these things don't happen, you know. You know it, I, I can look and see what should be happening, but it right. doesn't necessarily mean it will. Can can you see what lottery numbers will be <laughs> successful? <laughs> I'll tell you later, yeah, we'll, 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 okay. we'll split it. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, well, we briefly already mentioned uh, Chicago Gaming. We did? Uh, yeah, um, no news from them. Uh, we're still expecting a remake title to be announced uh, fairly soon. Um, the, the interesting news to report possibly is, um, while others said that there, that such title would be announced last month, we were actually, uh, well, I reached out to uh, Ryan White, who told me, uh, they were not planning to announce anything this month, and that was right. Yes, that's right. So yeah. um, just just a tap on our shoulder that we um, brought you correct information, uh, like we try to do all the time, of course. But uh, in this case, it was verified info that they would not be revealing a game, which turned out to be true. Yep, absolutely. Sometimes we can tell you where we got the information from. Sometimes we can't. But uh, we do try to keep it uh, as uh, as accurate as we possibly can, and, right. and source it well, you know, from the best people. So, uh, and, uh, and that's a, good, a great example of uh, of knowing that that, um, that Chicago Gaming are not going to be announcing a game in June, despite uh, yeah. so many other people saying the opposite. Right, and I didn't reach out to Ryan uh, this month, so I wouldn't be able to tell you what he would have told me. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, well, I'll but we're still we're still uh, uh, waiting for uh, uh, some announcement. But of course, yeah. um, they are facing supply chain issues as many other companies as well. So um, it could be that they would like to announce, but they can't because they can't finish production of certain parts. Yes, or, that's or right. can't order parts or what have you. So. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's completely something else. Maybe they don't want to announce anything. They want to wait th three more months. I don't know. Okay, so moving on. We've got no news from Chicago Gaming. No, no other news from Chicago Gaming. So let's look at some some other news then uh, in the in the pinball world. Some other other news. Yes, that's right. And uh, well, I suppose probably the biggest. Well, there's, know, there's a couple of a couple of biggies here. Let's start with the Museum of Pinball um, out in Banning, in California. Yeah. 
Um, that uh, turns out to be a rather tragic story. It I'm does. Uh, well, it may be. It's looking that way at the moment. I'm still trying to find out more and more details. Um, well, actually, there was a... I'll continue, and, and mm. uh, let me let me grab something over here while you're uh, uh, um, digging up the story. Yes, go ahead. Oh, well, I was going to say, um, uh, I've been, been trying to get the word from the horse's mouth and talk to, to John Weeks or Jonathan Weeks over at the Museum of Pimble, but they don't want to talk at the moment. And they're the ones who uh, who would really know what's going on, as uh, John own, is the owner of the Museum of right. Pimble and owns the the 18-acre plot on which the, the Museum of Pimble's buildings are located and the ends of buildings. Right. And Jonathan Weeks is his son. It is indeed. Just to, yep. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, Very good first name, by the way. Yeah, yeah well, a bit common, I'd say, but there you go. Um, so the, uh, the basic plan was that Museum of Pimble, as we mentioned last month, were planning to move to Palm Springs. They'd uh, identified a, a building, an old newspaper building, which had been refurbished and were, were all set to move in. And then it turned out that it would take an awful lot more time and an awful lot more money to actually get the building ready for the Museum of Pimble to move in, along with, yeah. along with its, um, uh, God knows how many games there are over there. There's over 500 pimples, uh, over 1,100 games in total. Uh, no, no, no. It's actually it's twenty two hundred games in total. Really? Wow. Yes. There's a apparently there's an extra warehouse that also needs to be emptied. Ah, okay, right. So, well, they got all those games, and it would take a far too long and far too much money in order to to, to move. Because unfortunately, it seems that um, that John has signed a lease with a company which grows cannabis. Which uh, is uh, legal in in that in California, and they are going to take over the existing buildings starting in October, and all the machines have to be out by that time. But right. there's nowhere for them to go, and um, that is the problem, really. Where can you move that many games? Now John's got a large plot of land. We said eighteen acres, and it's possible we could put up some some buildings. There. I was going to. That seems to me the like the cheapest option. Yeah, I mean, he's got other buildings, but I, I, I would assume that they are in use for something at the moment. But uh, the whole collection may have to go into storage. Right, but then why not set up your own storage buildings on 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 those eighteen acres? Yeah, well, you think? You know, I, I, I mean, oh, well, we we talked about shortages, and I know there's a lot of a lot of shortages in the construction industry as well, particularly when it comes to things like uh, concrete and uh, timber. Um, as we as we uh, mentioned before, the same same issues that were affecting Haggis Pinball and, and the timber that they needed to build their their offices, and the prices, of course, have gone way up as well. Uh, and to an extent, building those if you if you don't have a use for them afterwards is is kind of wasted money. But he, they are investigating well, the possibilities of what they can do. It's not so much that they, there's no use for them. He could also start his own pot growing business. <laughs> well, yeah. Potentially, I'm not sure how the existing tenants would take to that, but uh, that, um, I'm not sure that uh, that weed is a way out of this. But uh, yeah, maybe it is. But uh, well, a, I, I hear there's a lot of money in drugs. So <laughs> well, it certainly seems to be. If they were able to to, to take over that, those. Uh, uh, anyone who's been to the uh, Museum of Pinball will know that there were two very large halls there. One one pinball side, one uh, arcade game or video game side. And uh, those are all going to be uh, basically turned into growing houses, which uh, is you know, it's different, I suppose, for those of us who, who live in a culture where cannabis is not legal, which uh, I think probably just means me, actually, isn't it? Because uh, <laughs> certainly legal where you are in certain cases where you are, Jonathan. Oh. It's it's uh, certainly allowed over here, yes. Yeah. We, set, we, we set the tone. California took it from us. Yeah, quite right. Um, and as usual, yeah, uh, you're you're spearheading the uh, the uh, um, the uh, the movement, shall we say? <laughs> right. Yeah. So uh, at the moment, it's all very confusing, and time is running out. And I've been trying to write a story about it, but it's it's as you can hear, there's there's a lot of unknowns about what what's happening. They are trying to get sponsorship 
for the museum, but that seems pretty unlikely, to, in all honesty. Should they sell well, some games in order to raise some money? Well, the, the thing with selling the games is, what I understood is that they are willing to sell the entire collection to one buyer. Well, yeah. Who's that then? I mean, that's redu- I mean, you could sell off some games, but selling them off to one buyer, that's basically like reducing uh, your, your chances to one in a billion, maybe. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't make any sense. You could sell, I don't know, 100, 200 games, get, get some working capital if you're short of capital. But it seems like they got some money because they were planning to move into this other building and renovate it. But the cost of doing it is, is far more than was planned. So there was some money put aside for that. I suppose so, yes. Uh, but so, then of course, you have the well, problem of moving that many machines in a short space of time as well. You know, right. if you're moving them off the, off the site... So, yeah, to me, the obvious answer is to build a, build some properties in uh, on the yeah, on that, the existing that's, plot. That's what I figured as well. Put them all in yeah, there yeah. until you can you can uh, you know get. I mean, it's not like they were open that that often. They're open about four times a year. But also, one of the things um, that you have to bear in mind is that they were they were going to be hosting the um, in this the in this the it never drains in Southern California tournament which is now one of the biggest tournaments in the world and um was held in the in the biggest uh, collection of pinballs open to the public in the world and now uh, I'm, I, I know that the organizers of that tournament are, are looking for uh, possibilities of where they can where they can relocate if the museum is not there anymore and yeah. it seemed almost certain the museum won't be in that building because it's leases have been signed and they have to be out by october Right. So, well, um, in the meantime, of course, um, while the Museum of Pinball used to be the uh, largest public collection of pinball machines with, uh, I think, uh, over 500 games set up, and they might have had more in the, in, in, in their collection. Mm, but yeah. I'm talking about games set up. Um, yeah, over 500. The, uh, the, yeah, yeah um, obviously, with their new building, the, uh, the Pinball Hall of Fame is exceeding that number. Yeah, or at least they will be. They're not there immediately, but uh, I don't know how many they'll have at the the opening tonight. Um, well, I think uh, their aim for tonight was like five hundred, but in total they can have like seven hundred games in there. Yeah, it'd be amazing, wouldn't it? But uh, it's. Uh, I guess they take over the the uh, the title, and also you know, they are somewhere that's open all the time, you know, right. seven days a week. No, I don't, I, I don't know whether you need that many games for the uh, uh, in this uh, tournament, um, but um, um, it seems to me that the uh, the Pinball Hall of Fame might be a good alternative to host uh, the tournament. Yeah, if the games are in 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 a tournament condition. Yes, that's that's another point, and uh, they're willing to dedicate a, a, a large area of the museum. Over to just a, a tournament for just for tournament players, right? Uh, and spectators, but, uh, of course, as but, well. But that would just be uh, that would just be a one weekend, I suppose, or a week. And, yeah. Um, yeah. But it's 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 like uh, um, um, Wimbledon once a year or something, you know. Um, it's a it could be an annual event to be held at that location. But then again, okay, they, 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 it's not up to us to figure it out. Mm. Um, yep. So, 12, 12 hours ago, um, the Museum of Pinball did post on uh, the Pinsight Forum. Um, I'll, I'll just read a, uh, one line. I think I was John. Uh, f- uh, friends, staff, and volunteers, stay tuned for an update coming in a few weeks, and please, in the meantime, be, try to be nice to each other. <laughs> This is on Pinside. And then yeah. there's a, um, so, and uh, regardless of what the future holds for the Ministry of Pinball, let's be thankful for the good times that we had over the five plus years. Yada, yada, yada. Okay, yeah. so uh, okay, there's a thread on Pinside. If you want to read uh, the full statement, you can find it over there. Um, but um, um, the fact that it says that there is an update coming tells me that they are working on something. Well, try Whether it's good or, yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, and so but basically, as I said, there's, there's, it's confusing to exactly what's going to happen with that place and uh, difficult to report anything concrete at this stage. 
so particularly involving laying down any concrete. So uh, we were talking about Indisc just now and uh, being in the, the largest tournaments. Um, and that takes us neatly onto tournament play and the announcement this month in, in June by the IFPA, the International Flipper Pinball Association, that uh, they will be resuming their sanctioning of pinball tournaments from the 1st of August this year. So from that point onwards, you will be able to play in tournaments and earn those valuable whopper points. Woo! For those people. So I haven't been practicing for nothing. No, well, not as long, long as you keep the skills up for the uh, through the whole of uh, July. Yes, you'll you'll be uh, raring to go come the first of August. Um, for those people who are organising tournaments, the thirty day notification rule for registering your tournament with the IFPA is still active. So. Um, if you haven't registered your tournament by now, um, then uh, if you want to do one on the 1st of August, you better get onto it very, very quickly because uh, you've only got 30 days. Um, you have to register your, your uh, tournament 30 days before it starts. So um, get onto the IFPA website and uh, get the details filled in and get get it accredited with the IFPA. And then you could start awarding offer points and be, I'm sure there'll be a big rush of tournaments that will all start taking place at the beginning of August, uh, people to start earning their points and to make up for uh, all those that have decayed over the past, uh, well, goodness knows how long it is since it was uh, suspended a long time ago, it seems. And uh, basically, competitive pinball worldwide back on. Good, good. So, um, well, there's two more items on our list. Mm -hmm. um, I suppose I'd take the last one. Um, so why don't you go ahead and, and do the, sure. the second last yeah, one? Yeah, okay. Um, well, just, uh, just an announcement that uh, Norbert Schneiser, who's, um, who does a sort of regular two-day pinball maintenance course, has uh, announced he's doing a new online pinball troubleshooting and maintenance course called Pinball Machines, How They Work and Troubleshooting. It's um, it's um, it's a system where you can sort of do it over in your own time because it's online. It's not an intensive like two day course as uh, as other ones have been. Uh, it's priced at five hundred and twenty dollars. Um, what seems a long seems a lot of a lot of money, but it's um, it's an extensive course and it gives you one year's access to all the course material as well. So you know it's it's comprehensive. It's not just a, a skimming over it. Um, Norbert says uh, in a quote, um, "It's done in the same spirit as the two-day course, and is much more comprehensive, and also more in depth. Uh, the in the online curriculum would not be possible to cover in the time frame of the standard two-day course." Uh, he does go on to list all the things he's going to be covering, you know, like the Williams system, the Spike system, and uh, and. Um, various other systems as well, uh, which you will learn how to uh, both identify problems, uh, troubleshoot them, and and fix them. Uh, anyway, if, if that's something which interests you, you know, it might, might be something that would be more, more applicable to operators or trainees in, in the operator business, head over to uh, pinballtroubleshooting.com and you can uh, you can find out about that course and, uh, and Norbert's other um, uh material that which you can you can order from him so uh, just putting that out there that's available if uh if uh, doing a, a troubleshooting course is something that uh, tickles your fancy right okay um then there is um a bit of news regarding uh the magic girl game uh which was um uh, designed and developed by um John Papadouk for originally for his uh, Zitware mm -hmm. company and eventually manufactured by uh, American Pinball as actually the first game that they took into production when John was still uh, working there. Um, as you know, um, I think there were 19 or 25 games, something like that, in that order, uh, manufactured in total. Uh, it was a very sh uh, small run. Yes. The problem with those games was... Um, they don't work, or they don't. <laughs> well, yes. they flip, uh, but but there's hardly any game in there. Um, so, uh, much to the uh, uh, surprise of, uh, uh, well, a lot of people, I suppose, um, Gerard van der Sanden, who is the uh, uh, director of the uh, Dutch Pinball Museum, posted a photo of himself standing next to three 
Magic Girl Games in the Netherlands. And um, uh, the story with the O's uh, uh, was that um, there's a group of um, uh, people, uh, well, the three owners of those games, uh, uh, who basically spend uh, two and a half years of their time uh, trying to get the game working properly. And they are, uh, well, two and a half years in, uh, very advanced um, to the point where they have been uh, uh, redesigning certain Macs uh, that weren't functioning or that could never function the way they were uh, uh, put in the, in the game uh, as they were, right. uh, trying, to fi- trying to figure out how... Cert- uh, what certain Macs were supposed to be doing and figuring out a way how they actually could achieve that. Um, uh, for example, uh, the game was supposed to lock balls on the ramp, uh, but there were uh, there was absolutely no way the game could lock balls on the ramp because there was no way to stop the ball yes. at any point. And uh, um, uh, there were lots of um, uh, technical... Uh, shortcomings in the game, so to speak. Uh, so while it, according to many, it looks like the most beautiful box of lies you've ever seen. Indeed. A uh, gameplay was was very, very uh, poor. And um, uh, now that they have been working on it and fixing these Macs, as well as uh, fixing uh, the software um, by, by comparing uh, various software versions that they were able to get their hands on... Um, it's becoming a playable game, and uh, there will be more news from them uh, in the um, hopefully near future. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, a lot of people got enthusiastic and wanted to know more. Um, and uh, I actually talked to one of the guys, Eric Bartels, here in the Netherlands, uh, and we talked for two hours on the phone. He told me a lot of info, which is really too much to discuss over here. But what it comes down to is um, they are not completely finished yet, and they want to wait before putting out any videos of a game that's still not functioning completely. They want to finish the project so that they can actually, once they show it off, it won't be a half a disappointment if you if you understand what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Um, they don't want to show a work in no, progress. Of course. Yeah. They want to show what they did with it. And um, from what I understand, they are um, uh, well on their way uh, with this project. And uh, I can't wait to, uh, uh, to visit them, uh, hopefully soon, uh, to be able to play the game. Because whenever I've seen it, I was not able to play it for more than t- 10 seconds. And yes. apparently now there's... There is a game, and uh, uh, certain shots can actually be made. Um, so it should be, hopefully, a lot more fun to uh, to play. And there will be, um, I, I think, once they are able to go out with the news, uh, the way they plan to go out with the news once they can, I think it will surprise a lot of people. Well, great, great news that that's being worked on. I mean, I... My immediate reaction would be: um, Are they are they trying to create the game as it was intended to be? Or yes, they are. They're not, not trying to create a game that works. No, the best they, what can. they are. No, no. What they are trying to do is work in the spirit of what John intended. Uh, the only downside so far, I would say, is that John is not involved, and I'm not sure whether that has to do with any contractual obligations he has to deep root. Um, although I can see a benefit for Deep Root as well, because if I'm not mistaken, Magic Girl is still a game that they intend to produce at some point as well. And it seems to me that these Dutch guys have figured out a lot of stuff uh, that Deep Root doesn't have to figure out anymore. Mm, yeah. So if Deep Root is interested in taking Magic Girl into production, then I suggest Robert picks up the phone and contacts a couple of these guys, and I can help reach uh, for them, but I'm sure he can f- uh, contact them himself uh, as well. He's capable of, enough of doing that, and they're not exactly hiding. No, no, quite. Is there, is there anywhere that uh, anybody can see any uh, progress so far? You mentioned about Gerard. It, there's uh, pictures on the um, I museum. Think there was a pi- 
Oh, well, yeah, was I, it the Pinball it Museum? A, yeah, the Dutch Pinball, Dutch Pinball Museum Pinball, yeah. uh, Facebook page and probably Instagram as well. Uh, the, the picture with the three magic girls uh, is over there. Um, but any other info, um, we'll just have to yeah, wait until sure. they're really finished to, uh, to show what they did. And I'm quite sure uh, whenever they are ready, it will make quite an impact. I'm sure it will. Excellent. Well, that's a, that's a good point on which to, to uh, wrap up this podcast then, because uh, right. uh, a nice high point and something to look forward to for the future. Right. Okay, excellent. So thank you for listening. And uh, hopefully uh, you enjoyed this and uh, you'll be back next month when we discuss the pinball news of uh, July 2021. Yeah, and uh, as, as we said before, it's going to be a, a busy month, uh, we're sure, and uh, just as this month was. So we look forward to seeing you then with the next uh, Pinball Magazine and Pinball News Pincast. So until then, we uh, wish you a happy, happy time and we'll speak to you then. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye.